Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 13. Um, I just noticed if you haven't done a mission that I'm about to do, you try to ride a chocobo, they just run away. I thought that was kind of cool. So I'll show you guys that. And the mission that I need to go to is right here. Alright, so let's take a look. Defender of the Flock. A Sahagan infestation threatens the step chocobos. Um, he says that I can think of no happier way to spend eternity than watching over them from the water's edge. Well, I hope as a sea stone you're happy because you're watching them for an eternity at the water's edge. Just like you asked. So, yeah. Um, as you may have heard from my ranting, my two second ranting earlier. Uh, on video 124, or, which is in the future. You know, I've, I've had to post a couple videos before this one because somebody, no names will be named here, would not let me record. Um, yeah, I finally am getting a chance to do so. I actually came home early from work today so I could do some recording, partially because it was bad roads and snow and a whole bunch of fun stuff. And she decided she was just going to stay here the whole time and uh, invite her sister over to play rock band for a couple of hours. That was all fun. Anyways, I'm back to recording now. And uh, hopefully we won't have any issues like that. Um, hopefully I have enough time to finish the recording on this. And so we shall now head into uh, the Font of Namva is what it's called. And we get a cutscene. Looks like somebody needs a hand. Huh? <laughs> Hurry the what up? Jeez. Someone's had their feathers ruffled. Alright. We need to fight a few Sahagan. This is not a difficult fight by any means. Uh, once you've reached... Uh, Chapter 13, so just finish them off. You can do this back in Chapter 11 too if you want. Um, really, no difference. Uh, might be a little easier in Chapter 13, like everything is, but you most likely will do perfectly fine in the other chapter. And from this, we get the Geisel Reigns, which, if you remember anything from previous Final Fantasies, you know that that allows you to ride Chocobos. A few minutes later, and you'd have been plucked. And uh, most, most uh, Final Fantasies that I played, at least, have different methods of riding Chocobos. I guess this one allows you to just approach it and press A, and you can uh, jump up on them. Uh, they're, it says they're courageous, but you can't run into enemies. If you run into them three times, you lose what they call morale or a feather. And uh, you can also find hidden treasure. So let's uh, let's ride a chocobo. Let's check it out. There's three right there. Is it okay if we get close? Uh, first, let's let's get this treasure chest because treasures are useful. We get sea petal scales. Treasure not useful. Uh, interesting thing to note, especially in the font of Namva, you can only ride chocobos who appear on your map as a feather. You cannot ride other chocobos. Alright, so let's hop on board. Oh, goody. We automatically get the uh, little notification icon that there's a treasure nearby. So let's go and search for it. This is the one part of Final Fantasy XIII which I completely and totally suck horribly at. And yeah, I'm just showing you, you can run into them and bad things happen. So I read online that the chocobo looks in the direction of the treasure. That may be true, but you'll see that he's looking straight at the wall. There is no treasure in the wall. Now he's looking at the pond. We can't go that way. Now he's looking at a bunch of enemies. Nope, that won't work. Now he's looking at the save point. Ah, so finally, 
after like a minute and a half of following where he's looking, I just kind of give up and find it accidentally. In fact, that is how I find 90% of the treasure that I try to dig up with a chocobo is completely by accident. But the good thing is, chocobo digs up really good treasure. So, uh, if you're trying to find, you know, a bunch of, a bunch of, uh, gill or whatever, chocobo riding, if you're good at the treasure hunting thing, which I am not, might be a good thing to do. I think I still have yet to unlock the treasure hunting achievement on uh, on my other one, which I believe you have to find treasure 20 times. I don't know where I am now. Uh, I got off the chocobo so that I could come over here and get this last treasure chest, which is guarded by some Sahagin or whatever. And there's a pond in the way. So let's go over and get this. They're not really bad at all. Um, so yeah, what I'm doing right now, while I am recording my audio, which I really hope nothing screws up, I'm actually processing another video. And thankfully I can watch this one on Windows Live Movie Maker while uh, processing the other one on Windows Movie Maker and doing recording on Audacity. Yeah, I'm hoping nothing screws up because it likely will. That wasn't so bad. Since I'm running three very uh, processor-heavy software things at the same time, and we get a water charm. Uh, these charms, I'm not a big fan. They do not charm me. I generally sell all of them. The only bad part about this area, it's one of my favorite areas, it's nice and calm and the enemies are few and easy to beat. Uh, what was Hope doing there? Hope's been doing weird things lately. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is the random puddles of water in the middle of everything, so you kind of have to keep your map up and look at it to figure out where you can walk. It's a very nice area though. So yeah, I'm showing you, you cannot uh, catch a chocobo if they're not on your map. So here we go, back on this one. You know what? I always showed you what it looks like when Snow's riding it, so let's switch so Lightning's our battle team member. And let's ride it with Lightning. <laughs> Lightning really enjoys riding chocobos. I'm not sure why, she just told me that it's one of her favorite things to do. So, um... We'll, uh, we'll head on out towards the Arkilt Step. Alright, I said earlier, I think, if I didn't, I thought it. The enemies in this area are extremely, extremely annoying. We have the monstrous flan, the two monstrous flan, and then the group of Gorgonopsids. Which, if you can count, are three groups of enemies. And we have three feathers. So you have to get by all three of them, well actually you can hit one of them and be okay, but you have to get by them before you can use the chocobo out on the step, and I screw up here. So yeah, after a while it regens anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but uh, here's the Gorgonopsid pack, if you go left there you'll run into one of them likely. And one thing I decide to do is show you what happens even when you have three feathers, like I do now, if you run into any aura toys. Let's just say the chocobo doesn't like us running into aura toys. Like the adamantula, the adamantors, and several others. And uh, so he dumps us, as the book says, unceremoniously, and we look at his groin. Holy crap, that was not a good thing to look at. Um... YouTube, please don't censor me for that. I, I didn't mean to. Anyways, uh, remember back in uh, Eden where we had an Adamantula boss? And I was saying how I didn't think I could fight him and beat him? Well, as I noted at the very end, there is a, spe a specific. I can't speak today. There's a specific method uh, to beat them, and it involves not being a complete retard. So what you want to do is uh, do superiority or something along those lines so that you get uh, 
the buffs on yourself, debuffs on the adamantulid. Especially buffs on yourself, you really want to have protect on yourself. Uh, it appears that they... Well, it's probably because he has imperil, but it appears that we have uh, a little bit of a... I don't know, ice thing or whatever. He's casting frost on all of us anyways. Uh, a really good idea is to try to cast poison on the Adamantulid. That's because of his health being so high that poison actually does a really good amount of damage. However, I didn't get poison on in time, so uh, yeah. Another thing I noticed, Bay actually took off my first buff instead of stopping us, which was really useful that I wasn't dazed during that fight. So yeah, that went from a however long battle that was, 15 minute or something battle, down to 2 minutes. Alright, so now I'm just going to show you the Arkilt Step. It's a really nice place. Uh, I've said a few times that Square Enix has outdone themselves, and this is one of the places they've done, outdone themselves. It's a huge area, but um, what we did last video and what we're doing this video is making it even bigger. Uh, you can get to the top of that step there by riding a chocobo, and only by riding a chocobo. And same as with this one over here, which we're going to come over and uh, hop up here. Find that yellow marker, hop up, and avoid the cactuar because they like to put them in stupid spots like that. And there's a treasure chest, which we can open. And we get Scarletite. And now let's hop over and see what this sea stone is. It is... Tribal Warfare, Goblin Chieftain. There are other Lucy who have the same focus as him. In fact, there are several Goblin Chieftain marks in the Arkilt Step. Uh, I think I counted at least three of them, which I find very interesting for several reasons. But we will head forward. It says that he is in the range of the Behemoth King. Well, I stupidly think that it's over in this direction. It's not. See that Behemoth King there? I figured this was his range. It isn't. So I take a look around for a while. I don't see the little pink star. And it's starting to bug me. So I look a little closer, look a little further away. And I see something interesting. Ooh, watch that. That wasn't there earlier. It's a little leg off on our map that uh, we might now be able to access that we can use a choke bow. So I spend a few more minutes looking for that mark, which isn't over here. I will show you in a future video where it happens to be, because I just give up and head out. Uh, there is an area that's a little foggy, and uh, hey look, there's a treasure chest right here in the middle of the pond. We get a couple of Minar stones. Um, there's an area that has a lot of fog in it, and there's a bunch of Behemoth King and Gorgonopsids over there. That's the range of the Behemoth King that it's talking about, not that Behemoth King. So I was wrong. Um, oh goody, look! We can look for more treasure! Oh, we're getting close, see the thing bouncing? Oh, hey look, there's an Adamantula, or Adamantor is coming for us. Let's ignore him. And trying the following his head trick here and I give up and when I finally stop moving there it is seriously I never find it by looking for it I always somehow stumble across one so another gold nugget all right so I'm gonna head back up here and get stuck on the wall trying to avoid that guy and uh, go out around and here we are there's another treasure chest right at the top here. We get a few diabolic tails. And let's go into this area. Uh, this is called Padra's... Well, this area I think is Padra's Pass, and we are going to Padra's Pasture. Something like that. I don't really know. Uh, but Padra's Pasture has... Well sheep um and sheep 
give us another cool little cutscene, so let's go and talk to them. Hi, sheep! Uh, Benil? What's she doing this time? Yeah, that's a good boy. Don't get mad. I think he is a little mad. Uh, wait. It's just me. What, what are you doing? Uh, Stop that. <laughs> what the frig, Vanille? All right. Sorry about that. No hard feelings, huh? You obtain fluffy wool. Think they'll mind if you I know, can... Hope, seeing as how Vanille just pulled a chunk of their fur off of them, I don't think they'll mind. <laughs> um, yeah, so... I really don't understand the point of fluffy wool. I, maybe I ought to research and see if there is a point to it. But as of right now, I can't really find one, seeing as how you can sell it for about 10 gil. And let's take a look at these guys. We haven't fought one of them before. Spinning around, cheaping, annoying little things. Huh. Well, at least they're cute, you know. And it's not like they're big, fat, and like, oh my goodness! <laughs> Holy frig, what is that? Speaking of big, fat, and ugly. Um. Yeah. Well, now. This guy requires a little bit of, um. Let's give that one thought a to fight. Let's just say that. Uh. However, I put just a little too much thought into it. I want to have Vanille as my head, and actually I'm going to have Snow and Hope, not Fang and Hope. Uh, one thing I'm going to try is a uh, using Vanille's death spell, which works on this group of enemies and a few other enemies. Uh, however, it is a it has a very rare occurrence of happening i've i will tell you in a future video or past video depending on when you're watching this that uh that sacrifices they cast death but it's not much to worry about because um it rarely hits well same thing with vanille's death spell it almost never hits which makes farming for things with the death spell, which I shall show eventually, very annoying. Alright, we are fighting the Ochu and his many little pals. Uh, I think they are called Neo Microchu. Microchu. Neochu is something completely different. Um, so, yeah, basically try to buff yourself as much as possible, get a sentinel out there to take as much damage as you can, and get a few debuffs on on him make sure you heal yourself and i shall show you the death spell as soon as i decide to stop casting pain because i don't even think it does anything uh libra no libra scope that's better um that way you learn all the enemies instead of just one all right one thing you want to make sure uh don't have another saboteur out there. All they're going to do is dispel the stuff that's on the uh, micro chews. Completely pointless. So what you want to do is control the saboteur as Vanille, cast death, and if you're lucky, you'll kill him. I, however, am not lucky. Um, I'm going to skip forward about eight minutes. And seriously, you would not want to see me just casting death for eight minutes straight. And, um, yeah. I find out later that you can actually come back here and go relentless on his hiney and, uh, take him out pretty quick. And, I really just say hiney. Holy cow, that's retarded. Okay, so, just take him out. I mean... This guy's not as bad as when I was thinking it was. And just cast fire on these guys. I'm just casting fire right now. Um, Fira, Fira, I don't know. I like Fira. 
it sounds more fearful or something. All right, Firaga Fira. Death to Ochus. And um, yeah, so I just keep casting this over and over and over again. These poor, these poor necrochus, they sound so pitiful when you kill them. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't actually have like any remorse whatsoever. Is that a bad thing? I don't know. It might be. Anyways, we get rid of the Ochu. It took me seven minutes and fifty-six seconds. Yes, I was wondering. Thank you, if you uh, passed me for telling me what that was. Um, and we get a platinum mangle, which is at this point something we can sell for Gil. She looks really weird running in fast motion. She looks really weird running normally. So yeah, run over to the save point, and I think I do a little shopping here. Yep. Go down, check out what we got. We got me some platinum bangle, 24,000 gil. At this point, it's a lot better to sell it. Royal armlet, sell that. And um, I was trying to go for 2 million gil at this point, and I didn't get around to it. I say in a future slash past video why exactly I want 2 million gil. Um, and I decided to keep the Minar Stone because I thought that I needed them. Um, I think I sell them later. And if I don't, I think I'm planning to sell them. One of those. Alright, so uh, what I do in this cut when I when yeah when you don't see anything I actually went and beat up on the Ochu again because I felt a little uh, of a vendetta for that guy I wanted to make sure that I could actually take him out without uh, casting death a million times I can he's not as bad as I thought he was he went down in like two minutes um, so yeah onwards to this area we get a bunch of goblins. And... That was a long uh, loading screen for the fight. The goblins at this point are not very difficult. Cast a few Furaga and Blitz and take them all out. They're kind of fun to send up in the air though. This last one though, I, you gotta admire his spirit. Um, he never gives up. I mean, even when he's got like 10 health left and he comes flying at me, he just doesn't give up, you know? But uh, it's too late for him. So we head on out. Um, I've got no clue what I'm doing here. Okay, onwards. <laughs> If you can't tell, I'm doing post-commentary right now, as I've hinted at several times, I guess, throughout this video. Uh, anyways, we have a save point here. Tell me I don't go and save. Good. Okay. And we have a paling again. Uh, so let's check out what the sea stone is. And we have mission 30, Syphax the Insidious. The undying, fearsome sea who defy foul sea will. I don't think I'm gonna fight him yet. I probably could beat him, but he's way over in Mahabara. So I'm just gonna stick my head through this paling so you can kind of see. This is the... I The only way I know how to pronounce it is Harry. It's H-A-E-R-I-I. -I, Harry Archaeopolis. And uh, it's a pretty cool place. Um, the one in Yasha's Massif that I couldn't remember the name of, that's the, uh, Padrian Archaeopolis. And up here is the Hiriai, or Harry or something. Alright, so I'm coming over to this one, a Widow's Wrath, Pulsework Champion. I undertake not only at the Falsi's behest, but for my husband, whom the your curse machine butchered. So this sea stone is a woman who's 
whose uh, husband was killed by the Pulse Work champion. And she got his uh, mark, I guess, or she decided to do it as well. Um, and we'll head onwards, grab a chocobo. Hi, chocobo. Okay, screw that. I am not wasting time on another dig, so I'm just running away now. Head out for that. Uh, see, after a while, it just disappears. Alright, um. There's a Cactuar again. Some more Gorgon officers. Alright, here's the range of the Behemoth King. The foggy area with a whole bunch of things that make you get lost. And there's the Pink Star, so I'm heading right towards him. And there he is. So I'm just gonna dismount from the Chocobo. There we are. And fight the Pulse Work Champion. Now, keep in mind, this is a unique enemy. He is not like the Pulse Work soldiers you fought before. He is slightly stronger. That being said, you fight them exactly the same way. He's got head spin just like the ones in, uh, I guess, Mahabara and. Did the fifth arc ones have head spin? I can't remember. Anyways. Fight them. And I cast Libra, I guess. So he's got really good resistance to a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, the reason I cast Libra was because he was blocking a bunch. It looks like he's immune to magic. That's my guess. Because I don't actually take a look at it. Um, so I switch over to aggression once I stagger him. And here we go. And he's dead. Short battle. Be ready for the next fight. Uh, the only way to do better, really, than that is to uh, get a preemptive on him, and then it's like a guaranteed five star. So, all right, where do I go from here? That adamantulid right there to the right is actually a pretty decent leveling spot. You go over to him, you fight him, you beat him, of course, and he drops some pretty decent guild components. Uh, so you come all the way back here and head back up there and fight him. But anyways, I'm just heading past through here. Uh, and of course, you gotta fight these guys whenever you come by them. I mean, it's easy CP and it's fun to just beat them up anyways. And uh, the reason I did a Widow's Wrath is because this turns into a waypoint or a waystone. However you like to say it. So you can now teleport from here into any of these locations. Which is very useful. But I don't need to teleport. Anyways, end of my video. See you guys. Not over. Subscribe for another video tomorrow.